Hey guys, today I'm talking about the safest form of drinking water you can drink and you can make it at home during an emergency, a grid down. If you're hiking on the trail, you can do it in the forest. There's so many different ways to make this, but I'm going to show you three super simple ways to make the cleanest, purest drinking water. You could even take ocean water and use the same method and get separate the salt from the water and you would be safe to drink it. Unlike ocean water which would kill you very quickly so you want to make sure that you watch very closely and listen closely because I'm going to show you very careful steps now you can do this with without power you don't have to have electricity if the power is down at your house or if you suspect that your drinking water coming out of your tap is really contaminated you can use this exact same method around your kitchen and it'll make you all the water you want that's safe to drink but there's one caveat there's something in particular you need to add to this water if you're going to drink it long term because there can be negative health effects if you just never drink anything but this type of water. So this ultra purified water has more uses than just drinking. I'm going to put on the screen right here 30 plus uses that you can use for this type of water and these are all of the things you can do to make life a little bit easier and make it easier if you're in a grid down situation, emergency situation or lost on the trail. So not to put too fine of a point on it, but this is going to separate your water from impurities, heavy metals, metals, chemicals, bacteria, and it will make it completely safe to drink. So if you're having any of these issues with your own tap water, you'll be able to safely store it. And I'll talk about storing it, the life of what is the lifespan of storing it and how to store it. So let's get started on separating our unclean water, our contaminated water and making it into the ultra safest and the most purified water you can have. Now our first method of purifying this water is going to involve heat, specifically a flame, but you could do this on a stove top if you have power or even a campfire. I always recommend having the sterno canisters in your cupboard because they can be a lifesaver during a power outage thing. And these things would burn for multiple hours, depending on the size. You can get them really small or this size and even bigger. They're usually used in buffets and it keeps the food warm, but it's got a gel type of alcohol in it. You just light it and it will burn for, like I said, depending on the size of the container for many, many hours. And you can use this process if you come across whatever situation in your life, whether hurricane, tornado, natural disaster, something like this when you have zero power will be a lifesaver and you won't have to go outside and do this in the heat or cold. Now you don't have to have a stock pot this size. You can go down to just a regular pan that you might have in your kitchen. But in this particular instance, I happen to have this stock pot and I thought it would work great. So let's add our water to it. We're gonna put one gallon in. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a secondary pot in here and these little handles really make it a little bit better because we don't want this going off to one side too far. We want to try to keep it centered in the pot so if you have the issue with floating you could add something heavy like a glass or something like that to the, weigh it down just a little bit or putting less water in there. But just remember we need a pot where there's a small gap between your interior pot and your exterior pot. Now this is the perfect type of lid shape we want. We want it to have this type of arched lid and there's a couple of issues with it. There's a vent hole to allow steam to escape and there's also a screw that holds the top on. Now that's not a real problem unless you're using something that's contaminated on top of it and it's going to leak back down. So we're going to be putting ice we're going to be putting ice on the top of this and so if the ice is contaminated then you have a problem because it could leak contaminated water back into our purified water. So the way to get around that is, is to use an ice pack like this and we're trying to keep the, the top of this lid cool while it's heating up on the inside. So if you think your ice is contaminated use an ice pack like this and you can prevent any of the contaminated, uh, contaminated ice water getting back into our secondary pot. So I've discussed our lid and a couple of potential problems there from recontaminating our water. The second possible way that this water on our interior pot could become contaminated is if our water's too deep and this boiling over back into our pan. Now right now we're floating on the surface, but as this interior pot fills, it's going to sink to the bottom and set on the bottom. So if you still have too much water in your large stock pot, it's going to boil back over into your pan and then it would recontaminate it. So one of those things that you might not even see happening. So make sure you don't put too much water into your initial exterior pot. Maybe fill one third full and then monitor it and see how it goes. And then you can slowly add water. But again, just we, we don't want this interior water to be contaminated in any way. All right, let's cut our stove on and start the process. 
All right, so we're gonna place our lid back on our exterior pot, try not to make too much banging noise there because the mic microphone is very sensitive. And then I'm gonna add ice to the top of it for visual reasons. But again, if I thought this ice was contaminated, I would go back to the gel pack. So let's add this to the top to allow the water to condense much better on the surface, the interior surface of this lid. So we're going to do a time lapse here and over a period of about 20 to 30 minutes we'll see how much water we collect in our interior bowl that's completely safe and drinkable. So let's say you have a ice that may be contaminated, but no ice pack. So you could use something like this, a glass pie pan, and place it inside of your container there, and then put the ice on top of it. Now this one has no holes in it, and there's no way for the ice to recontaminate our water once it's done its distil distillation process. So just remember that we're trying to keep this water as pure as possible. Now, if you're doing this process because you think you have really heavily contaminated tap water, then it might be good to buy you an extra large stock pot and a secondary stock pot that will fit inside of it. This could be your water collection device and you can drill this out and add in a tap where you can get the water out. Set this inside your fridge and you have the most purest, cleanest water you can imagine for the least amount of money. Just the cost of either running your stove or a sterno or anything like that. And depending on power or emergency situation, you can have safe drinking water. Now let's suppose for a minute you're lost on the trail and all you have is just minimal camping gear and you're completely out of water. I'm gonna show you how to use your camping cup and hopefully you have bought one of these stainless steels because almost every camper and hiker uses these, I certainly do, that you can cook in them, you can use them as a, cu a coffee cup in the morning and so they'll last forever. They're stainless steel, there's nothing added to them, there's nothing sprayed inside of them, just pure stainless steel. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer and show you how to do this if you're lost on the trail and you don't have access to anything but possibly contaminated stream water or pond water, or even if there's not a pond or stream nearby, you can use this method to create water in just a matter of a couple of hours. So you're on the trail, you're in the forest, and let's suppose you are desperate for drinking water you're gonna dig a hole in the ground. This bucket is gonna represent a hole that you're gonna dig with your, hopefully you have a shovel with you in your camping gear. If not, you may have to use a small knife, but just a small hole of this size can work. Next, we're gonna play, place our drinking device inside of it, our collection device there. Now, you can use either something like a Ziploc bag or any type of clear plastic. I'm gonna use cling wrap. I'm gonna to try to do this in one take. All right, so we're gonna place a small stone directly in the center of our, whether it's cling wrap or a freezer bag or anything that you have in your camping gear. It just needs to be a clear piece of plastic. We often carry stuff like this in our camping gear and we just don't even think about it, but something like a freezer bag could be a lifesaver in a situation like this because you could use that as this method. Now, when you dig this hole, you wanna make sure you dig it in full sunlight and also, if the ground does not have a lot of moisture in it, you can pull weeds and you can place weeds all around this. Now, we're talking about a minimal amount of water each hour, but this could be life-saving if you're only surrounded by contaminated water or there's no water at all in the vicinity that you're hiking or you're lost. So something like just a piece of clear wrap and your standard camping gear, a cup like that, can save your life. So just remember, dig the hole, put rocks around the edges. I've taped this with painter's tape just to simulate the same thing. And then the rock in the center, the sunlight will evaporate all the moisture out of the hole. And this really works great if the ground has a high moisture content and it will go right back into your cup. It might take an hour to accumulate maybe half a cup of water, but again, that could be life-saving. If you have enough clean wrap, you can make multiple holes. And if you have more than one collection device, it can save you quite a bit of headache there. Now, I'm considering getting a countertop distiller and I'm not planning on drinking distilled water just all the time because that's not healthy for you unless you do one thing because there's a minerals missing out of this water and the most of the wa healthy waters we drink have minerals in them. Some of the healthiest water I ever drank was from a neighbor's well and it tasted great and it's extremely, he had it tested and it's extremely 
filled with all types of good minerals, no bacteria, nothing like that. But one thing that you want to add when you make this water is either you need to put an electrolyte powder in it, just a small amount because it definitely will change the taste, but just a pinch of it will help. If you don't have electrolyte powder, you can use Himalayan sea salt or any type of naturally mined salt. It contains a lot of minerals. So that's one of those things that this water is, there's a lot of debate going on as to whether or not distilled water is completely safe. Some people say it will leach the minerals out of your body. Some people say they drink it all the time. I'm going to err on the side of caution and say I would add in the electrolyte powder, just a small amount if you're going to drink it over a long period of time. Really for me, this is an emergency situation and that's why I'm discussing it because I remember a few years ago there was a situation in a northern town where their tap water was so contaminated it was dangerous to drink. So that's where a countertop distiller would come in and it could really save your family's life or at least their health that is. So let me put some links in the description to some countertop distillers, the ones that I've been looking at and I'm planning on ordering and that have the highest number of positive reviews. They're not cheap but it could be the perfect solution so you don't have to go through this entire process of creating distilled water yourself. Now we're going to see what we collected after less than 20 minutes and also I put a small chopstick in here to make sure none of the ice would go back into our container. This also contains a gasket that's very tight there and it's heat safe and so it didn't allow any of the water from the lid as the ice was melting. We just had a standing puddle of water here. So let's take a look and see exactly how much water we created in a short amount of time. I'm going to use this can opener and I would highly recommend using a pair of kitchen gloves because this is still very hot. I'm going to set this off to the side and then we're going to take our interior pot and I'm going to have to move the camera around a little bit. I hope you can see this. Now this is, like I said, this is a very short amount of time. I'm going to pour this into our collection device. Let's see how much water we created here in less than 20 minutes. And this is the purest form of water than you can imagine because it has been completely distilled. So it is still very hot to the touch, but you can see in 15 to 17 minutes, it created nearly half of a mason jar. So a couple, at least a couple of cups of water or not more. But if you did this over a period of an entire day over and over and you were in an emergency situation, you could create enough drinking water for your family just from heat. So if you find yourself camping and you don't even have saran wrap or any type of freezer bag like that. There's so many different ways you can do this. As I mentioned earlier, anything that's waterproof that can allow a certain amount of sunlight to get through. Now you could use the rain fly from a tent. You could use a rain poncho, a small rain jacket, and you can use something as simple as a water bottle, a soda bottle to put in there, cut the top off and invert it, and then do the rock trick right in the center. And then as the water drips down, whatever it is, your rain jacket or anything that's waterproof, is going to come down to the inside of it and drip into our container and refill something as simple as a soda bottle. So you have to be creative when you're lost or you're in an emergency situation. And so distilling water is going to make the water the safest it can possibly be. Now if I could talk just for a second about storing your purified distilled water. If you're going to consume this, meaning drinking it, you want or cook with it, you want to make sure you use it within 90 days and make sure you store it in a cool, dark place. If you're using it for some of the other uses, such as sterilization or anything like that, humidifiers, neti pots, that can go up to six months. But just remember that if we're going to be drinking a lot of this, we want to make sure that we just store it just for a limited 90 days. And if you put it in the refrigerator, that can extend it. The freezer can extend it beyond that, but we're basically talking about doing this for emergency situations. So guys, I've created a Patreon if you want to see added content or early release content. If you have a question about this video or any previous video, please become a public subscriber first because I put those comments and questions. I filter that through the YouTube management system to the very top of the line so I can get to those people first that have subscribed to me. So guys, I really appreciate you watching and have a great day.